Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss important questions of RTD. That is residence time distribution for non-ideal reactor, which are mostly asked in an interview. If you know the answer to any question, please comment in the comment box. And if you like my video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Chemical Idda. So let's see the questions. What is the difference between an ideal reactor and a non-ideal reactor? So ideal reactors are those reactors in which every molecule of reactant spent an equal amount of time or space time in the reactor. So ideal reactors are perfectly mixed reactors. It may be a batch reactor, plug flow reactor, packed bed reactor, or perfectly mixed continuous reactor. So, because of proper mixing in the reactor, every molecule of reactant spent an equal amount of time in the ideal reactor. Examples of ideal reactors are CSTR, PFR. But in the real world, these reactors always deviate to some degree from ideal behavior. Hence these reactors are called non-ideal reactors. So non-ideal reactors are those reactors in which molecules have different space-time. Hence, non-ideal reactors are also called real reactor. This reactor never fully follows flow patterns and the behavior of a specific reactor mostly depends upon the extent of mixing. Now next question. Why non-ideal reactor deviates from the ideal reactor? So, non-ideal reactors always deviate to some degree from ideal behaviors because if there is no proper mixing, that's why the molecules of reactant do not spend an equal amount of time or space time in the reactor. Next reason is by the creation of nearly stagnant regions in the vessel. So during the process, in some sections of the reactor, fluid flows very slowly or does not flow at all. Due to this, the effective volume available for reacting fluid reduces. This is shown in the first two figure. Next reason is, by bypassing or short circulating the fluid. Next is, by channeling. So in short circuiting, the inlet fluid takes a shortcut route to the outlet, without undergoing conversion in the bulk of the reactor. The same way channeling occurs in packed bed reactor, then bypassing. So in a packed bed, the inlet fluid bypasses the catalyst particles to the outlet. Next reason is, by recycling fluid. And last reason is, due to water seas and turbulence, at inlet and outlet, in plug flow reactor at inlet or outlet, Vortices and turbulence may be formed, which also affects the behavior of the ideal reactor. Hence, because of all these reasons, the behavior of a non-ideal reactor deviates from the ideal reactor. Now next question. What is RTD or residence time distribution? So, Full form of RTD is residence time distribution. Hence residence time distribution is the time that takes a molecule to pass through a reactor. That means fluid molecule require time to pass from inlet to outlet of reactor. This time is called residence time distribution. Hence from RTD, we can tell that how long a particle stays in the reactor once entering in the reactor then the distribution of time that is rtd 
can significantly affect the performance of the reactor. Because, as we know, in an ideal plug flow reactor, all the molecules of material leaving the reactor have been inside it for exactly the same amount of time. Similarly, in the ideal batch reactor, all the molecules of material within the reactor have been inside for the same length of time. Hence in the ideal plug flow reactor and batch reactor, all the fluid elements have the same residence time. But for a mixed flow reactor, the feed introduced into it at any given time, then it is mixed with the material, which is already present in the reactor. Due to this, some molecules entering the mixed flow reactor leave immediately and other molecules remain in the reactor almost forever because in CSTR all the material is never withdrawn at one time for reactor hence the distribution of time that is RTD can significantly affects the performance of the reactor then the RTD of a reactor is a characteristic of the mixing that occurs in the reactor Now next question. Define exit age distribution. So, the distribution of times for the stream of fluid leaving the reactor is called exit age distribution. As in the reactor, every element of the fluid pass through different paths with different length of time. Hence, there is the distribution of these times for the stream of fluid leaving the vessel. Hence this time is called exit age distribution. It is also called residence time distribution. That is RTD. It is denoted by A. It has unit time inverse. Now next question. How RTD can measured? RTD is determined experimentally by using an inert chemical as a tracer. So at some time T equals zero. Tracer is injected near the inlet. And the concentration of the tracer C measured in the effluent stream. As a function of time. There are two methods for injecting the tracer. First one is pulse input. Second is step input. Now next question. For determination of RTD. In pulse experiment how tracer is introduced. So in a pulse input. An amount of tracer N0 is suddenly injected. In one shot. Into the feed stream entering the reactor in as short time as possible. Then the tracer concentration in the exit stream is measured as a function of time. The graph shows pulse injection. That is, how concentration is changing with respect to time at the inlet of the vessel. And the pulse response graph shows how concentration is changing with respect to time at the outlet of the vessel. The pulse response curve is called as C curve. From the pulse response we can see that the concentration of tracer in the effluent stream increase with time, reaches a maximum value, and then falls which is approaching zero. Now next question. For determination of RTD. In step experiment how tracer is introduced. So, in a step input, we meter cube per second of ordinary fluid is flowing through the vessel of volume V meter cube in less than zero time, that is T is less than zero, then at T is equal to zero, switch from ordinary fluid to fluid containing tracer, 
with tracer concentration C max. That means, at time zero we start adding a small flow of a tracer to the feed stream and measure the tracer concentration in the effluent stream until after a long time it matches the concentration of the feed stream then at the outlet concentration of the tracer C step is measured as a function of time until after a long time it matches the concentration of the feed stream the advantage of this method is the total amount of tracer in the feed over the period of the test does not have to be known but disadvantage is the concentration of tracer in the feed is sometimes difficult to maintain constant even a large amount of tracer also required for this test now next question which are two stages of aggregation of the flowing stream the two extreme stages of aggregation of the flowing material based upon its nature microfluid and macrofluid so microfluid is the fluid in which molecules are free to move everywhere collide in intermix Examples of microfluid are gases and thin liquid. As the molecules of microfluid are mix, collide and move everywhere. Hence, microfluid exhibits no segregation. Now let's see macrofluid. So, macrofluid is the fluid in which globules or aggregates each contains a large number of molecules of a given age do not mix with other globules is called macrofluid as the globules or aggregates do not mix with other globules hence macrofluid exhibits complete segregation examples of macrofluid are very viscous liquids non coalescing droplets now next questions what is the early and late mixing of fluid? So, the fluid elements of a single flowing stream can mix with each other, either early or late, in their flow through the vessel. This is shown in figure. The early mixing and late mixing also called maximum mixedness and complete segregation respectively. Usually, this factor has little effect on overall behavior for a single flowing fluid. However, for a system with two entering reactant streams, it can be very important. Because if two entering reactants A and B are well mixed at the entrance, then they have lots of time for reaction. But, if two entering reactants A and B are mixed at the exit then they don't have time for a reaction which is shown in figure so that's all about rtd measurement of rtd exit age distribution early and late mixing and pulse and step experiment for rtd measurement in the next video we will discuss another set of questions. If you like my video, please like my video. Share this video with your friends. And subscribe to my YouTube channel which Chemical Idda.